Today we'll talk about something called the vital force theory. This is the first thing that we're going to talk about in the organic chemistry. So, first of all, there was a scientist called Berzelius in the beginning of the 19th, uh, 19th century. And uh, Berzelius classified the compounds into two groups. So we have organic compounds and we have inorganic compounds. So from the names it's obvious that inorganic compounds are the ones extracted from organic origin like plants, animals, humans and so on. Inorganic compounds are those um, made from metals from the earth crust and etc. So the problem with Berzelius is that he um, Suppose that these organic compounds cannot be prepared in, in laboratories or artificially. They uh, can be just obtained from the extraction process from an organic source. Rather than that, you cannot prepare an organic compound. Then after about 20 years, came another scientist called Bulla. And that scientist proved that Berzelius was uh, wrong. So what Gola did is he prepared urea, which is an organic compound, of course, from ammonium chloride and silver um, cyanate. So what he did is he let the ammonium chloride react with uh, silver cyanate. So that's the, uh, the ammonium group, that's the CNA group, and this is the chloride, and this is the silver. Okay, what happens here is the, it's a simple reaction, just the cations and anions exchange together. So we have the uh, silver taking the chloride, so we have silver chloride plus ammonium CNA, NH4. C and O. Okay. Then what happens is that a compound rearranges itself. Here we have two nitrogens, as we see, one carbon, one oxygen, and four hydrogens attached to that end. So it makes an ammonium group. Now what happens is NN takes two H's, two hydrogens. Another N takes the two other hydrogens, and in the middle we have the CO here. This is urea. This is urea. So we succeeded to prepare urea from ammonium chloride and sulfur nitrate in the lab without obtaining it from an organic origin. And by that he um, Prove that the theory of Berzelius about the ability of obtaining organic compounds is wrong. That was a very, very important point in the history of organic chemistry because uh, scientists began to prepare the organic compounds artificially, and now we have about 10 million, um, approximately 10 million organic compounds compared to half a million of inorganic compounds. So, a very, very obvious difference. And uh, accordingly, the ratio between both of them is 20 to 1. And this shows us how important organic chemistry is, and that's why it has its own branch and its own science. So there's a specific field called organic chemistry just um, studying the reactions of organic compounds. And this wide variety of organic uh, compounds is related to the ability of carbon to form up to four bonds. So the uh, carbon atom can form four single bonds or um, two single bonds, let's say, and a double bond, or two double bonds, or one single bond and a triple bond, and so on. 
So the possibilities here are endless, and that's why the uh, range here is very wide. So that's it for today, and the next time you are going to know what is the molecular structure or the molecular formula and the structural formula to know how to uh, write or draw the organic compounds later. So that's it for today. Until the next time, and thank you for watching, and see you.